Broadcasting from New York City to the world, it's the G-Man Interviews. Welcome. The following excerpts are from a report published on Yahoo News on October 15, 2015. Regulators in the United States and abroad have reached troubling conclusions about the risk of potassium bromate that you probably don't know about, but should. In 1999, the International Agency for Research on Cancer determined that potassium bromate is a possible human carcinogen. It is not allowed for use or is banned as a food additive in a number of countries, including the United Kingdom, Canada, Brazil, and the European Union. The state of California requires food with potassium bromate to carry a warning label. The report, which comes courtesy of the Environmental Research and Advocacy Association Environmental Working Group, shows that potassium bromate is used in at least 86 baked goods and other products commonly sold in supermarkets. Incidentally, the organization has urged that the product be avoided. Potassium bromate is added to flour to strengthen the dough, help it to rise higher, and give the bread a white color. But it has also been identified as a potential human carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer and is listed as possibly carcinogenic by the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Various lab tests on animals found that potassium bromate caused significant increases in kidney, thyroid, and other cancers in animals. A 2011 study published in the journal Chemico-Biological Interactions also found that it can damage DNA and cause oxidative stress in humans. While it's uncertain how much potassium bromate a person would have to consume to experience negative health consequences, the Food and Drug Administration has placed a limit of 75 parts per million in food products. It should be noted that the GMAT interviews purchased several popular food products from associated and key food supermarkets in New York City, all of which contained potassium bromate, and none of them had warning labels, as required in the state of California. The state of New Jersey labeled it a hazardous substance in 1998. On October 17th, an email was sent to Jennifer Doran, press officer for the Food and Drug Administration, to try and obtain an explanation as to why a chemical that has been labeled a carcinogen and considered extremely hazardous in most countries for nearly 20 years continues to be used in many of the products sold in U.S. supermarkets. On October 19th, Ms. Doran sent an email indicating that her colleague, Megan McSeveny, would follow up on the request for information. On October 20th, Ms. McSeveny submitted this email statement. Gary, first it's important to understand that when potassium bromate is used as a dough conditioner, according to good manufacturing practices, there is little or no residual bromate in baked products. Recent label surveys by the FDA have shown that the industry has significantly reduced the use of this ingredient since the early 1990s. Potassium bromate has been used as a bread dough conditioner since 1916. It is listed in the Standards of Identity for Bromate Flour Products in Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 21 CFR Part 137, and Bakery Products in 21 CFR Part 136. Since the 1990s, the FDA has worked with the baking industry to help them improve technology and testing for this ingredient. Potassium bromate is also an approved food additive for use in malting barley, 21 CFR 172.730. However, the beer industry has indicated that it has not been used widely for the last 30 to 40 years. Additionally, if potassium bromate was used in malting barley, there is likely to be little or no residual bromate residue in the beer that consumers drink due to its decomposition during the malting and brewing process. Regards, Megan. The GMAT interview submitted the following response on October 21st. Miss McSeveny, I greatly appreciate the information you submitted. Your statements will be read to the YouTube community during the episode. Once it's posted, I'll send you the link. Feel free to share it with your colleagues and superiors. Having said that, I'm afraid the questions I posed have gone unanswered. Again, for the sake of clarity, please respond to the following. Question 1. Brazil, Canada, our neighbor, and European Union countries banned its use back in 1999 and continue to do so. 
why would the United States take the position that the ingredient is completely safe for consumer use? And as a follow-up, is the FDA saying the conclusions drawn by regulatory agencies and scientists in the aforementioned countries are flawed or wrong in comparison to U.S. findings? Question 2. The state of California ordered warning labels placed on all products containing potassium bromate. There's a major inconsistency here when examining the FDA's position. If it's as safe as the FDA claims, then Cali wouldn't have done anything, right? Clearly, State officials heard about or saw something in the reports that made them take drastic action. In view of the state's decision, why didn't the FDA take the position that all states should carry a warning label? And follow up, even if, as you previously stated, there is little or no residual bromate in baked products, shouldn't the public be given an opportunity to choose for themselves and their families by having warning labels placed? Wouldn't that be the fair thing to do? especially when you consider that little children are consuming these products too? On October 22nd, in her final email to the G-Man interviews, Ms. McSeveny stated, Gary, the FDA does not generally comment on state-specific regulations or regulations from other countries. One week later, a call was placed and an email was sent to Ms. Monica Amorella, Director of Communications for the Environmental Working Group. She as well as the executive director of the organization, was invited to appear on the show to discuss their report on the controversial chemical, but she respectfully declined. However, she did take the liberty of submitting a link to the full report, which has been posted in the description area. And finally, for the sake of full disclosure, there is one other thing I must report. In March of this year, much to my surprise and that of my doctors, I was diagnosed with a thyroid condition that required immediate treatment. I've never had an issue with my thyroid, so this was a complete mystery to my doctors. I'm not out of the woods, and I will have to be monitored very closely from now on. I can't prove there's a direct correlation, but I must consider one crucial fact. Prior to my diagnosis, I consumed Pelagonia breads for quite some time. It's one of the products on the Environmental Working Group's list that contain potassium bromate and should be avoided. Several calls were placed to Palagonia Bread Products, Inc. in Brooklyn, New York, to obtain comments about the Environmental Working Group's report and to ask why it continues to use potassium bromate in its baked goods. All requests for information and an interview went unanswered. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was ever a YouTube video that needed to go viral, this is one. With all due respect to them, Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian, Lady Gaga, PewDiePie, and videos about dancing cats aren't nearly as important as this issue, which may be having a significant impact on the health and well-being of every person, child or adult, in this country. That said, I respectfully request that you share this episode with as many people as possible, including state attorney generals and elected officials in every state. If you won't do it for yourselves, then I ask that you do it for the children of America. I'm the G-Man, and until next time, stay cool, stay safe, and stay informed.